Hi guys, what's up? So there's this story I saw on the internet and it has bothered me for a few days and I decided to just talk about it, okay? Now, I'm just diving right into it, okay? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe if you're new here and if you're already subscribed, then thank you. There's this story of a 10-year-old girl that stomped basically stomped a baby to death, okay? A six month old baby. They were in a is it foster home or a care home or something like that, daycare of sorts. And you know, they said the baby was kept upstairs sleeping and they told all the kids to go outside and play. And this particular girl refused to go outside and play and she decided to stay back. I'm not sure anybody knows the full details of what happened. However, they feel like she went upstairs and tried to carry the baby, then the baby fell and started crying and then in order to shut the baby up she proceeded to stomp on the baby's head several times and you know after she was done doing that you know the baby was basically unconscious or basically almost lifeless she put the baby back into the crib and left then later on the baby was discovered you know basically almost dead the baby was rushed to the hospital where the baby finally died and they discovered that there were several bruises and you know stuff like that like it was obvious that this baby was murdered and not you know accidental or anything like that right so they arrested the 10 year old girl you know i saw an interview with the father saying like he couldn't forgive the girl like he wanted the girl to look at him in court but you know she glanced at him briefly before her father you know was comforting her stuff like that basically the father of this child of this baby that was killed was very very distraught like i just couldn't imagine you know leaving your child in the care of people that you trust or people that you think will take care of your child and then another child that they're taking care of decides to you know do something that terrible to your own child like it's really really sad i can't imagine it and i can't even imagine what the parents are going through all the parents in this case okay however i'm going to be focusing more on the parents of the 10 year old girl because do you know what it means for you to at 10 years old be convicted of murder like how according to what i heard by the time she's 18 she's going to be released on parole or whatever but you know because she's actually a minor like she's a minor minor she's not a 16 year old type of minor this is a 10 year old right so and i've also seen other cases of 10 year olds that actually killed younger children there was a story of two 10 year olds who abducted a two year old boy from the mall he was with his parents or with his mom or something and you know they lured the boy away and took the boy to a field or an old railway or something like that and they tortured and killed this boy okay like they tortured him basically to death and even stuffed his body his body with batteries and stuff like that i don't like talking about things like this but i just had to you know talk about it today because this thing happened like a few years not a few years maybe some years back i'm sure it's more than 10 to 15 years now that this particular story happened then this new one happened you know some weeks back or so and there have been so many stories like this happening in between you know, okay if you are someone that likes to go into crime stories and all of that you hear different stories of several children like basically children who have been committing the most atrocious murders and crimes possible right anyway what i'm here to talk about is parenting okay how parenting can be very very crucial i don't know i feel like Sometimes we'll talk about oh things like stay at home moms, talk about you know hands-on parenting, talk about gentle parenting. There are different types of parenting out there. I feel like we talk about them with so much light-heartedness sometimes. We don't really talk about how grave and how serious the consequences of bad parenting can be. Okay. Now, why am I blaming the parents of this 10-year-old girl? I don't know who else I'm going to blame because she's a 10-year-old girl. Okay. Yes, she's grown enough to understand the ramifications of what she did. Yes, you know what she did was very terrible. Yes, I mean she's not a toddler or a baby. So, you know, she actually knows what she's doing. However, she is still young enough where we cannot totally put all the blame on her. Okay, now, first of all, why is she in a foster home when she has two parents, okay? Why is she in a foster home? I don't want, I don't want, I don't know the full details of, you know, why she was there, what happened, whatever. Some people were speculating that she has some emotional or mental issues that led to that, right? Even if that is true, it is still an indication, like, what she did is still an indication of failed parenting, Okay, because these days I see a lot of things online, you know, be like this, don't be like this. See, one of the most judgmental places you are going to ever be on, on the internet, is 
under the post of a video showing a parent and their child interacting okay it doesn't matter the type of interaction you're putting your child in the car seat you're taking your child to the mall you're making your child's hair i actually got flack for one of my videos making my child's hair in fact for two of my videos actually you know making your child's hair you are you know with your newborn baby parents came to see a newborn baby even gender reveal videos the comment section is always full of people that are judging the parents on, you know, what they did or what they did not do, okay? So, once you become a parent, judgment and judgmental comments are going to just be coming your way unprovoked. You don't even need to do anything about it, okay? You don't even need to even come out and put out, you know, what you think about parenting. People are going to judge you based on what they see, okay? Now, as much as that is true, and there's so many, you know, platforms online there's so many books online there's so many books available for you to read on parenting how to parent your children how to do this and how to do that for me as far as i'm concerned there are so many factors that can lead to failed parenting okay number one is who you are as a person this does not have anything to do with you having a child or not who you are as a person is going to greatly affect the kind of parents that you are going to be. Don't think that by virtue of you having a child, you are going to change. Don't think that because you have a child, you are going to do better, you are going to know better. It does not work like that, okay? Parenting will humble you. Parenting is going to reveal in you a lot of nasty things about yourself that maybe you don't want to admit, okay? So one of the biggest indication of how you are going to be as a parent is how you are as a human being, okay? And then another factor that actually plays a huge role is what you know, okay, about parenting, what you know and what you think is the right thing to do, okay? This is actually intertwined with the first point, what you think about parenting, how you consider being a parent, okay? Now, there are people who consider parenting as, oh, it is their God-given, people like me, <laughs> it's our God-given, you know, mandates to take care of these children. Like, these children are responsibility we have like everything my child does i take it as a reflection of who i am and what i do as a person like i, I take it personal like anything my child does i'm like where did i go wrong okay so there are parents like me that you know are like that then there are also parents who are they don't really care their children are accessories to them their children are just the next stage or the next step in living in being an adult in being a human being you get married you have kids you go to school you get married you have kids okay so they don't really have that much thought or that much you know intention behind their decision to have kids and how they treat their kids so they're just going with the flow until you're 18 and you get out of their house that's all they are doing like they don't really care they don't care about your future like i'm not even sure they know that they don't care right in their heads they think they care but when you really ask them some particular questions or when you see how they do particular things it's obvious to you that they don't really care about, you know, their children like that, okay? Some people feel, oh, how can you say a parent doesn't care about their children? It is facts. It is facts. The fact that a parent has a child and just grooms that child till they are older does not mean they actually care about that child, like, more than a regular human being cares for the next human being, okay? So, for instance, if I had a, maybe my neighbor's child or a friend, I would be there for my friend. It does not mean that I'm attached to their outcome or their future the way I would be attached to my child's outcome or future, right? That is another level of parenting. Then we have the bad parents, basically, failed parents, the ones that are just, you know, there, they don't really care. Their child to them is just a child they don't like they don't care they have more children for the sake of having more children some of them have children for the sake of what they can gain from the government some of them do things just because i got pregnant i did not know how to prevent pregnancy so i got this child whatever just exists until you know you can get out of my house okay they don't mind if the states even collect their children from them in fact they are happy they are happy to drop their children off at their grandparents places at the at their parents places they're happy to leave their children in foster care they're happy to leave their children with their mothers to take care of and they just breathing and breathe out right they are those ones and then the last sets are the very very terrible ones who actually have children so that they can do very terrible things to those children okay those people exist don't think they are just a fraction of people's imagination no such people actually exist who give birth to children so that they can torture the children and do all sorts of terrible despicable you know mind-blowing things to those children right but this plays out in the way human beings interact so you meet some people and they are so uncouth they are so disrespectful they are so i don't know how to explain them and you're like don't doesn't this person have parents like 
You see some things that people post online and like, you know, get, you know, get family members. Don't you have family members on your social media? So that's what you are going to see when you actually pay attention to people. You will see that so many people had little to no home training. Some of us, we had home training, but you know, sometimes we just drop it aside and then mescafo. <laughs> you drop your home training aside small and then you misbehave and then you feel bad about it and then you take your home training back, okay? That's the story for some of us. While some people, they don't even have it. Like, they don't even get why what they are doing does not make sense. To them, it's like, okay, this is just the way they understand and this is the way they live, okay? So, but right now, those of us who are now parents, who are now raising our kids, we need to do better. And me saying we need to do better, I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to judge people again, even though I, I judge some people that are extreme with their own. I'm not trying to judge, you know, the majority of people because I know most people are trying their best. Most people don't know better. Most people are doing what they, they think they, they, they should be doing, right? But they are getting outcomes that are very, you know, scary. For instance... You think you've done all your best with being a gentle parent, then your child goes out there and, go, and goes to fights, okay? Because some people say they don't want to be very harsh as parents because you don't want a child who will learn, you know, being harsh and go and be harsh to the society. But you can be a gentle parent for all you can, or with your power and might, and then your child will go out there and disgrace you, okay? <laughs> that is one thing. Again, like I said, parenting will humble you, okay? That reminds me, let me give you guys a little story of something that happened to me earlier when I was having kids and then right now it's almost like I'm seeing the camera play out in real time and it's just so hilarious to me okay now I remember when I just had Cora no I didn't just have Cora Cora was a year plus I was pregnant with Sof with Ava okay then I went for my friend's birthday party it was an adult birthday party but at that point my husband was not around and I wanted to go for the party okay it was a home house party it wasn't anything serious just you know come to the house and all that I don't even think I knew there was a party I think I was going to see her because it was her birthday and then I met other guests in the house I think that was what happened because I don't remember me actively because if I had known it was a party party I wouldn't have gone with my kids okay so with my with my child but then I wanted to just go and see her and, you know, she had a party in her house. So while I was there, I was really tired. I was really pregnant, like very, very pregnant. And then Cora became cranky. And at that point, I actually forgot that, you know, her diaper was full, right? Because she was still wearing diapers. But Cora was cranky. I'll give her food she does not want. I'll give her this she does not want. She wants to take the remote. She wants to play with this. And I didn't want her to play with things that, you know, she could spoil. So I was trying my best to, you know, remove her from the situation. Trying my best to just control the whole thing. But she was throwing tantrums. At some point, she now theft throwing a full-blown tantrum. And then that's when it now clicked that, oh, I've not checked her diaper. But before then, while I was now trying to gather myself and, you know, take her, because I had to carry her diaper bag and everything. Before I could gather myself, my friend's husband told me that, ah, the way my child is behaving, that didn't I read books about, <laughs> this is a true story, guys. Didn't I read books about parenting? Didn't I read books about, you know, how to manage a child, a, a toddler throwing tantrum? I was like, um, no, I did not read. He was like, ah, that's, maybe there's one book he will, he will recommend for me. He started reading books about it. They didn't have kids at that point, too, that he's going to give me a book to read about how to manage, you know, this situation because he was uncomfortable with how my child was behaving, right? And to be honest, I felt so embarrassed about the whole thing. Like, I felt, because people were there. It was in the living room. People were there. And, you know, my child's attention was already coming to me because of, of the way, you know, Cora was behaving. So on top of the attention, you now, you know, stand up and declare that I'm not a good parent because I've not read books about, you know, how to manage a child throwing tantrum, a one-year-old throwing tantrum. Like, who knew? Like, wow. So surprising that a one-year-old would be throwing tantrum. <laughs> even if everything was, was right, even if her diaper was not full, even if she was okay and, you know, she would still have thrown a tantrum, right? So, I mean, I'm not someone who forces my child to be potty trained early. I'm not someone who does that. Like, I posited my children nothing less than two years. Like, it has to be two years plus before I start it, before I even attempt. Okay, and yeah, for my own reasons, I don't, it's not something I just, I don't even think I even really put it train. It, it just gets to a stage where the picking self go tire for to the wear diaper and then we move on from there, right? So anyways, I felt really embarrassed, but you know, it's what it is. I took my child to the bathroom, changed her diaper, and you know, shortly after I had to leave, I, I just couldn't stay. She was, she was already fine, though. Know, she was even calm, she was eating, she was normal, but I just couldn't stay. I had to leave, you know, so I drove home and I felt really, really sad about this thing. Anyway, fast forward you know, some years later, at that point, they already had a child, okay, and, you know, the the father, that is the husband, this same guy, came to visit, and then he saw where um, Eva had written on the wall, right? Yeah, 
Eva had written on the wall in my house. Uh, when he saw it, he was like, uh, who wrote on the wall here? And I said, my dear, it's Eva. Like, Eva is... Eva used to be a very, very... Now she has even calmed down. Eva used to be a very active child, right? She used to be very active. Jump here, climb here. Where, where Cora is still doing... Uh, uh, I can't pass. Eva will just... In fact, jump, jump and pass, you know, that kind of thing. So she used to be a very, very active child. So even when she was, when he was here, you know, Eva was playing, you know, she would climb here, I would tell her, calm down, you know, she would do something. I say, this child, leave, stand, calm down. Like, you know, I was doing that in his presence. And then when he was not leaving, I was like, ah, bring your child now. Bring your child for us to play with, for my kids to play with. Like, instead of allowing your child, I think that was during pandemic period. I think that was a pandemic, Yeah. I think that was during the pandemic. And I was like, instead of your child to just be home alone, bring your child to come and play here. Because for my own kids, during the pandemic, my kids did not even miss anything because they had friends their age that they were playing, they were seeing constantly. Like me and my friend, we that pandemic period there was when we became very, very close because we were always in each other's houses. My kids and her kids were always playing. So my kids did not feel the pandemic. They were fine, right? So I was not like, bring your child to this house. Let, let the child come and play. Because for me... Actually, losing a child like that, that for that long is not is not good. And many parents actually experienced, you know, hell with their children after the pandemic. That's with their children who had, did not have friends or who did not interact. After the pandemic, it was like a lot of things had gone wrong, you know, during that short period. So I told him to bring his child. And then the next thing he said was, no, I cannot bring my child, though. Your child is too rough. Well, your child will, will, will teach my child how to be rough. <laughs> By saying my child is too rough, I mean Eva. Like, me saying Eva used to be rough. Eva is not a boy, first of all, right? So she's still a girl. And she just used to... She was just active. She wasn't, like, a very rough... She wasn't doing things to injure herself or injure her sisters or anything. She was just an active child that liked to play. Liked to jump on the chair, you know, jump on the couch. She was writing on the wall, you know. I mean, and all these things she was doing, I was stopping her. It wasn't like, oh, I was just that kind of parent that would just sit down and her child would write all over the wall and just jump on the chair and fall and break their head and everything. And you're just there sitting pretty. No, like, I was shouting, I was talking, I was stopping... While all these things were happening, you know. So when the guy now said that, ah, my child will make his child rough, I just laughed. I was like, my mind was like, it now took me back to that first time when he told me about reading the book. And I was like, anyway, your own is different. You part those, those people that carry these kind of things on your head, not me, right? And that was that. Now, fast forward some few years later, one day his wife brought the child to come and play in the house. I play with my kids. And then I was looking at this boy and I was like, I hope my friend is not watching this video because if you are the person, you will, you will, you will catch yourself immediately. I was looking at him and I was waiting to see one well-behaved, you know, perfect child that would be like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know those kind of children. I was expecting to see a yes, ma'am, you know, maybe after eating, carry your plate to the kitchen and wash your plate and keep it back. You know, maybe you are just very respectful, very, I was expecting to see and this boy was just, now to me, he was just being a normal kid, right? But because of the standard that the father had, you know, portrayed, I was expecting so much more. In fact, my kids who are, um, you know, the ones that are not raised, right, according to his standards, right? My kids were normal. My kids were, you know, normal. They know how to interact with other children. They know how to play. They know how to share. They know how to, you know, do some things that the boy was not doing. And I was like, I was thinking, you know... You, we are the experts, right? I'm not saying this because I'm trying to judge. Because I, because the wife, funny enough, is very normal. She's like, she doesn't care. She's just, not like she doesn't care, but she's just normal. She's not in and about the whole thing. Like, she understands. I think mothers, too. It might be that. Mothers, too, understand that children will be children. Like, you cannot really... There are some things that are normal for children. We don't need to start making it look as if that child is, 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 is a terrible child because they are, they are exhibiting some characters, right? Anyway, I said all this to say that you cannot sit down as a parent or as a non-parent and be judging other parents when you haven't gone through certain things, okay? When you haven't had your own kids, when you haven't raised your own kids. You cannot just sit down and be judging and be saying, oh my God, I can't do that. My child can never do that. Your children will disgrace you. In fact, it's almost as if the more you say, my child can't do that. It's like it's almost like that is when the child will not decide to do that in very well, so that they will show you that you know you are not who you think you are. Okay. All that aside, there is still a level of indiscipline or disregard that a child will have that you can actually blame the parents for. Okay. Now, in this case of the child stomping the child to death, 
I still blame the parents because there is something fundamentally wrong with a child that can do that kind of thing, okay? Now, I don't know why a child is in a foster home when they have both parents and both parents were in court, right? I don't know why a child was in a foster home. I don't know what the child is going through. I don't know what the child saw at home. But however, there is something fundamentally wrong in a situation where a child can do that. It is not a normal behavior for a 10-year-old. Like the average 10-year-old is not going to stomp a child to death because the child was crying. An average 10-year-old that I know will be trying to beg the child, sorry, 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 or run a gun and call somebody that this child is crying for no reason or look at what happened, right? Right? An average 10 year old will not stomp another child to death. There are so many things that are wrong in that situation, and I feel like the parents are to blame. Now, even if your children or your child has an emotional or mental or developmental issue, it is your responsibility as a parent to find out what those issues are and address them, okay? No matter what it, your child has, even if your child is schizophrenic, wanting, 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 no matter what it is, the situation can be managed with intentional parenting with you know early diagnosis and early intervention no matter what it is even if it's autism i don't want to group autism with you know that kind of it's not something that it's not related right but i'm just saying even if it's autism that child has adhd developmental delay whatever it is that the case may be early intervention intentional parenting and seeking help would actually help you manage that child and help the child integrate into society as a normal child, okay? At least as normal as they can be. Of course, there are some situations where you can't totally make the child a normal child, normal in the sense of, okay, what an average 10 year old would do, but you can raise a child, no matter the issue is, you can raise a child who would not stomp another child to death, okay? Like, I don't know if I'm making sense because I didn't really actually plan what I was going to say in this video. I just know that I wanted to just pour out how I've been feeling about this topic because I'm like, how bad can it get for you as a parent for you to raise a child that will do that kind of thing? Okay, now, do not underestimate the power of prayers, okay? That is one thing I'm always going to be advocating for. Pray for your children. Pray for your children. You cannot do it all as a parent, okay? No matter how you want to be this intentional parent, gentle parent, you know, homeschooling parents, all those kind of, you know, parents, no matter how you want to do that, if the devil decides to be on your matter, eh? If the devil decides to possess your child, there's really not much you can do about it, okay? If you are not a prayerful parent, if you are not, you know, praying about your child, if you're not praying for your child or exposing your child to, you know, good morals, right? And let me not say church, let me not say Bible, but exposing your child to good morals, there's really not much you can do if you do not add prayers to it okay so as parents we have to really 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 think about it when we are whenever we are saying oh this child is always doing like this this child no matter what i do have you prayed about it have you taken it to god you know some people might differ some people might say not everything is not everything is, is prayers yes i agree not everything is prayers okay there is a part for you doing your, your job there's a part for you reading books okay i'm not totally against reading books okay i'm not against you practicing certain things that you have learned online i actually do a lot of visual audio learning okay i don't i'm not want to sit down and read books but if i see a material or a video about parenting i would watch i would listen to it right so there's nothing wrong in, with you doing that However, there is a place for prayers, okay? Some things that we are giving names to are actually demon possessions. Okay? Uh, yes, I said it, okay? I hate to be that person. Oh, actually, I like to be that person. Yes, yes actually, I actually like to be that person. I'm going to point it out to you that your child might be possessed by a demon. Your child might be possessed by the devil. Your child might have several demons in them, okay? So, what do you do in that situation? You need to pray about it. You need to cast and bind <laughs> you need to cast and bind I'm, I'm not even want to say carry the child to church because i feel like as parents we have so much power i don't know what another pastor is going to pray for my child i cannot pray for my child i'm sorry i'm sorry like you don't have more access to god than i do you don't have more authority over that child than i do in fact i have more authority over my own children than you do okay so i can reach out to people to help me pray for my child because i am weak in my spirit at that point but I'm not going to go to a pastor or someone else to pray for my children because I believe that their prayer is going to work better than mine. Like, make it make sense. They don't have more access to God, like I said. They don't have, <laughs> they don't have back, back entrance access, or whatever they, they call it, to God. The same access you have to God, the same access I have to God, okay? The same faith you need to make things work in my child's life. It's the same faith I need to make things work in my child's life, okay? And even the Bible says, just like I said, this, even if you have you know, faith as the mustard seed, you can move mountains. So why do I need to, like, how much is your faith that I need to 
that tiny little faith that I have that God will answer my prayer is enough for me. So as parents, you need to be prayerful. You don't need to take your child to anybody to go and lay hands on them. You don't need to take your child to anybody to go and perform any exorcism on your child. You don't even know what they're doing to your child. You don't know if they're even adding more demons for your child. You don't even know. So I'm not an advocate for that. If, Of course, if you trust the person and you, know, the, you understand the person or whatever, but I would say as a parent, you are the one that nobody can love your child more than you, okay? Except you have issues by yourself. But on a normal day, a normal parent who loves their child, nobody can love your child more than you. Even Jesus Christ said this, right? If you as a father or as a parent, you cannot give your child snake when your child asks for a, a fish, if you cannot give your child stone when the child asks for bread, then how much more are Father in heaven, okay? So for Jesus Christ to use that as an example, I feel like a, the love of a parent for their child is the highest form of love you can get on earth, okay? That's why he gave that example. Like if you can't even do that, then how much more your Father in heaven, right? So you can't tell me that I, you have more authority or more love for my child than I do, right? It's not possible. This is my flesh and blood. Again, except in extreme examples where the parents do have issues, right? Why can't you go on your knees and pray for these children? Pray for their mental health, pray for their physical health, pray for their emotional health, pray that you don't do things to damage your child, pray that the society does not do things to damage your child, pray that your child does not pick up things that will damage them. Just pray okay it is very very important i'm always going to advocate for prayer in whatever the case may be okay because at the end of the day these children are the what we have they are they are our arrows okay they are what we have to show for our time on earth if you have kids right i mean it's easiest thing to even present let's not talk about you know what to do for other people or what to do for mankind we're talking about the children that you gave birth to anyway all i'm trying to say is that as a parent your children are the easiest things you can present to God and present to the world as this is my accomplishment, this is what I was able to do, you know, while I was on earth. This is something worthwhile I was able to do to raise godly kids, to raise human kids. Um, people that are very, very, I don't know, you meet some people today they are, and you're like, what went wrong in your life that you're this terrible? It is parenting. Okay, so you raising human kids, you raising respectful kids. I'm not saying kids are going to be perfect. Nobody's child is perfect. My own children, if, if they do some things, yeah, you said you're going to look me with side eye, okay? Yeah, so I'm not saying your children are perfect, but overall, overall, all things being equal, your children should be able to act like normal, decent human beings and not like little devils, right? So that is it. That's basically all I came to talk about here. Um, there's no excuse why a 10 year old should do that to a child. So that's the baby, okay? There's no excuse. So the parents should be held accountable. Like, there should be a jail. As you're putting the child in jail, the parents too should be beside that child, okay? Especially when it has been proven that, you know, the parents lacked in some way, okay? Again, for the child to be in foster care, it means that the child was taken away from the parents. So I don't know what the situation was at home, but if it can be proven that the parents actually contributed to that child's misbehaving, then lock all of them up together, okay? Let them go and bond in jail and, you know, get help inside there. What are you doing as a parent to raise a decent human being who at least will not kill another child? Like, at least that's the barest minimum. Like, at least don't be a killer, okay? <laughs> when I was saying that you should be a nice, respectful human being, eh, eh, just, just don't kill anybody. Like, what do you think, you know, went wrong? What can parents do? Do you have any advice for parents or do you have a personal story that you can share in the comment section? Let me know. Please leave a comment and I will really love to read your comments, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.